first want to ask you, Sky, did growing up and watching your father, the legend that is Robert Townsend, affect or inspire your decision to want to pursue a career in singing and acting? Yeah, I think, you know, I talk about this all the time. Um, watching him enjoy the work that he did was so awesome to me because I saw so many of my friends' parents not love what they do. And I saw my dad go to work with a smile. And I remember just being like, oh, I get the chills thinking about it. I remember just being like, I want to have that much fun when I go to work. And I remember manifesting that as a kid, like, I got to go to work and love what I do. And when I'm done with it, and I, I, I you know, I'm not happy anymore, on to the next. And so from him, I really learned you can always pick up and try something new, whether it was going from music to acting, acting to comedy. But, um, but we always prioritized having fun with what you do. I love that you say you manifested this as a child. Like who, knew, as, as a child, I didn't even know anything about manifesting. I love that you started young. Were you taught that to like manifest your dreams at an early age? You know, it was never called manifesting in our house. It was called speak it to the universe or speak it to God. And so my dad would say, speak it out loud, speak it to the sky. And so I would out loud be like, I want to win an award. I want to be a star. You know, at that point, I wanted to be famous more than I wanted to be talented. But that's a different story. But, um, but we were raised to, yeah, speak it into existence so that you can now create this and make it a reality. I love it. And it is now your reality. You started out pursuing music and going on auditions at the age of 17. You're now 27 years old, starring in season two and a beautiful 27 year old at that. Starring in season two of HBO's hit, A Black Lady's Pet Show. Sky, what have you learned in the past 10 years of the pursuit of your dreams and now having them realized? Okay. Okay, I like that. I like where you're going with this. Uh, what have I learned? Wow, that is a wonderful question. Nobody has asked me that. Um, I have learned that nothing about your process has been in vain. Uh. Um, it has all been practice. I thought that I was prepared and I was not. Mm. I thought that God-given talent was enough. I got lazy and didn't know it. And so I think every part of the journey made me hungry, made me humble, made me want to work hard. And uh, wow, nothing was in vain. Every gig, every disappointment, every audition, I either met an ally and didn't know it. Wow. Or, uh, I had an experience that taught me a lot about work ethic. I worked so hard this season because I didn't want to disrespect them for giving me the opportunity. Right. Wow. So yeah, nothing is in vain. It was it was 10 years and and I can't even process that number, but I learned so much to where now I am properly able to articulate myself and deliver because I had practice. It was 10 years of practice. Sky, you just dropped. Look, we have we need another we can't even chill with that question, Ashley. Relax. <laughs> we need another interview to just talk about that alone. That was so good. Um, now I want to dive in to all things a black lady sketch show because sis, you killed it, knocked it out of the park. How did this opportunity come to you? How did it come about? Talk to us. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because I had seen season one and I remember emailing my team. Why didn't I audition for this? What is going on? Did you see this? And they said, yeah, you know, they already have their cast. And I was so upset. And so when this came, uh, came about, I knew that I just, I had to get in the room and I knew I had to prove to them that I made sense for this. And so uh, we did all of the auditions through a self tape. So mm -hmm. I, I had my setup, you know, I was ready. I prepared, I wrote it out and, and I just prayed. I sent it with like so much good energy and I prayed that they could see how bad I wanted it. And I got the call call and I, I jumped for joy. I screamed. Um, but it was powerful because when I saw the first season, I emailed my whole team like, you guys, how did you miss this? How did we not, you know, and it just, it's, it's incredible because season two was perfect. Um, I got to come in. I was ready. I got to understand what the show was about. And it was just, it, it just was everything aligning at one time. I mean, you fit so perfect. I talked to Lacey yesterday and like you two both just fit so perfect with this group. Um, talk to us a little bit about what fans and viewers of, you know, they watched season one. Now we have season two. We have two new beautiful people, plus all of the amazing guest stars that you have. What can viewers expect and fans of the show expect in season two? I think fans will, you know, I will say this about Robin Thede. Mm -hmm. she season one and she said how do we improve mm 
Mm. How do we grow? How do, who do we add? What do we need? What can make this better versus just saying we figured out everything. So I can humbly say season two has really improved in a beautiful way because she said, let's learn, you know, right. let's learn and let's elevate. We came in out with three Emmys, let's get six, you know? And so um, I think, yeah, I think viewers will get a dose of new energy. You do feel the presence of new people on the cast, but in a really awesome way. It feels like new cousins came to town and you're welcoming them. Uh, but I, I, I think they will laugh and I think they might go like this at some oh, point. Oh, I did. I was like laughing and doing this at the same time. <laughs> Every time I had a character, I'm like, I want to put them into shock and then they'll <laughs> giggle. So I think they're going to be blown away by how much growth happened. And, and that's really a testament to, to wanting to be better versus being comfortable already winning. I love it. I know the fans and the viewers will love season two. I can love you in it. Scott, when you, you know, you posted recently the billboard of you, girl, and I was in tears, right? Yeah. I was like, okay, I have to talk to her about this moment. When you first saw this billboard and your face is on there, again, given the 10 years of the pursuit of this dream, right? What did you feel in that moment? And not to mention you got to share it with your dad. What is going through your mind? What emotions are you feeling? Describe that to us. Um, I got to share with my dad and my agent who has not quit on me. And mm -hmm. I have learned so much about support system through both of them, right? Mm -hmm. Because I say this is a win for all of us. I, I like we all wanted this moment. But when I saw it, the best way that I can describe everything that's happening right now is it's all happening very fast after so much slow. So I, I can't really process it, but I had so much fun doing the work that it almost feels like a passion project versus a TV show. And so it's kind of confusing for me that people will see what I did because mm -hmm. it felt fun. It felt like we were just playing. So when I saw the billboard in that moment, I felt like I was the only one who could see it. I couldn't process that my friends and family will drive down the street in the city I grew up in and that I love and go, Sky did it. I couldn't process that. And so even, you know, I wanted to cry. I wanted a beautiful, like, right, right, right. I, I was so in shock. I was just like, it's so pretty. I couldn't process that this moment took so many years and now it's moving like light years. I couldn't um, process it. So, so yeah, in that moment I sat there and I, the first thing that comes to mind is teamwork. Wow. I, I, before booking this show, I booked this show at my lowest. I booked this show as I was depressed. And so I think of the people who said, you're forgetting who you are. Uh, so when I see the billboard, I, I think of teamwork. I think of, I didn't get here on my own. So having my agent and my dad there, it's huge to understand who's uplifting you and keeping you going in, in this process. Guys, I have chills and a tear. I got chills. <laughs> Keep going because, okay. So what advice would you share with people that will watch this that are at their lowest moment and they're on the brink of wanting to give up? They've been pursuing for 10 years, maybe five years. What advice would you share? You know, no matter what career path they're on, they're just on the brink of giving up and they're in their low time. What advice could you share with them? Something that I always say, the light at the end of the tunnel only feels good because we had to figure out how to work our way around the darkness, right? We know love because we know hate. We I mean, wouldn't know how good it feels to win if we didn't have losses. And something that I'll say about my journey is I was always raised to do good in the dark. Uh, I was always raised to not put it online. I was always raised to be good. Learn the, learn the homeless people in your neighborhood. Be good to your friends. If you got it, let them borrow it. And right. at this point, I look at this moment and I say it all the time. I get chill saying it. All my good karma hit me at once. Girl, sky. And so I would say to anybody in the dark, it's going to feel so good when you get that moment. You won't even be able to process it because if you can find joy when it's really rough, the joy when it gets good, it's like, I, I even doing this, I'm so excited to be talking to you because these are the moments that I was waiting for is to be able to share as an artist so yeah the light at the end of the tunnel it's going to feel very good if you were in the dark for sure okay look again we need another session because <laughs> this right here you're dropping nothing but gems okay i have to tell you i love your podcast that you have with reina um, unpack and bounce back you created this during the pandemic and season two is currently underway sky what inspires the stories and topics that you two discuss on your show 
the real conversations we have in real life. Mm. We talk about it and we go, somebody needs to hear this. Or, right. you know, like even the person I am today, I was not always like this. I was judgmental. I was crazy. I was lazy. All of these things I said, maybe if I can share my stories and make it fun, mm. and make it digestible, because I don't want to come off like I think I'm Dr. Phil. I'm not. I right. don't come off like an expert. I don't want to whisper in a weird voice and be like, oh, this is what I learned. You know, like this is a safe space. I'm going to come out and say, what, what did I learn from heartbreak? What did I learn from failure? And what are stories that you'll laugh and then cry and feel like somebody's in it with you? So we did it. And when we go in, we dim the lights, we light a candle, we pray, and we say, we're going to be honest and they'll feel us if we're honest. And so it blew up over the pandemic because we kept it real. You guys kept it real. And I can't wait for season two. Can you tell us when we can expect season two? Yes, we um we are almost fully, fully done with season Yay. two. Here's May 3rd. So oh, we're gonna- that's right around the corner. Okay, I'm excited. I am so excited. I, I'm so excited about what you have going on. Um, I absolutely adore you. Love you. Love your journey. Love hearing it from you, from your voice to my ears. Uh, before I let you go, you know, you're known for the Beyonce impersonation. What can you give us, girl, before we head out today? Give us something. What would Beyonce say about this journey and this moment for you? <laughs> When I woke up this morning, I was feeling like Jocelyn Hernandez. So let me tap into Beyonce really quick. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. You know, I think if I were to reflect on this moment as Beyonce, I would say, wow, the journey was worth it. And hard work, you know, always pays off. And sometimes you have to clap for others until it's your moment. And then when it's your moment, those people will clap for you. And so I would just say like, even doing these videos, I'm doing sketch comedy on a national incredible network after doing videos in my room on YouTube. And that is a journey. (laughs) You know what, Sky? I love you, sis. Keep killing it. Keep inspiring us. I need to come on the podcast. I need you to know. I need to come. And we need to have another interview. You need to come back and tell us whatever you have going on. I need to know. We need to know about it. Please keep in touch, please. I am. Congratulations. 